afternoon, everybody. Welcome to class. And today we're moving on to a new topic, right? And that new topic is called the characteristics of life. So it is a bit of an easy topic, but because plant and animal cells have a lot of structures, it can get a bit confusing if you're not paying attention. So like I mentioned, the topic that we will be starting today is called the characteristics of life, right? Good. So as we know, we have living things and non-living things, right? So we know how to differentiate between living things and non-living thing. things. For example, I am a living thing. However, this AC remote is a non-living thing, right? But that we know the difference between those two from just common sense and from growing up and knowing that, okay, this AC remote is a non-living thing. However, a human being is a living thing, right? However, to be a bit more scientific, we could differentiate between, well, between living things and non-living things using this term called Grimna. So to help us to scientifically differentiate between living and non-living things, we're going to learn about the seven processes that all living things carry out, which classify them as a living thing, right? And to help us remember these seven different processes a bit easier, we use the term Grimna. So I'll okay, make this a little smaller, right? So Grimna, G-R-I-M-N-E-R. -E so this is what Grimna stands for, right? So the G in Grimna, stands for growth, the R stands for respiration, the I stands for irritability, the M stands for movement, the N stands for nutrition, the E stands for excretion, and the R stands for reproduction. So we're going to go through what each of those processes entails, right? So in order to know if this is classified as a living thing, and once it possesses all seven of those characteristics, then we can see, okay, this is a living thing, right? So let's start with G. G stands for growth, right? So growth is basically a permanent increase in the size and complexity of an organism. So as we know, as we increase in age or as we get older, we also increase in height, we increase in size, some specific organisms, whether it be a plant species or an animal species, become more complex, meaning that they gain more cells or they gain more organs, right? That's what you mean by complexity of an organism, right? So R in Grimna, R stands for respiration. So respiration is the process by which human beings extract energy from the food that we eat. So this is a very important process because as you all would have learned, all living organisms need energy in order to survive and carry out all of their daily activities. Once an object carries out respiration, we also know that, okay, this is a living thing. Good. So then we move on to the I in Grimna. I stands for irritability right? So irritability refers to an organism's ability to respond to changes in its environment. So let's explain what that means, right? For example, let's say you all are sitting in front of a laptop, right? Listening to me teach class. But let's say this really big gross fly keeps buzzing around your face and you could see it in front of your eyes buzzing around your face and you eventually see that gross big fly land, in, land on your face, it lands on your cheek. Are you going to leave the fly on your cheek to crawl about your cheek while you listen to class? Or are you going to take your hand and swat away the fly before it even gets a chance to land on your cheek, right? So you're going to respond to that fly flying around all over you. One, because it's annoying and you want it to get out of your way. Two, it's distracting, so you don't want it to bother you. And three, we know that flies are really gross, right? Right. So you're going to take your hand and swat the fly away, 
some of you may get some bump spray and try to kill the fly, right? So that's what we mean by an organism's ability to respond to changes in its environment. You can react to something that's occurring in your environment. So then we're moving on to M, right? M stands for movement, right? Most organisms move from place to place in order to obtain food, shelter, water, a habitat, or they move away from danger, right? So almost all living organisms can readily move from one place to the next if they want to obtain food, if they want to obtain water, if they want to find a safe habitat. For example, if it is you are on the beach and you see a tsunami coming towards the shore, so these massive waves coming, are you just going to remain on the shore and watch the tsunami? No, you're going to run away to try to find safety. However, there are living organisms that do not possess this characteristic. For example, plants. So not all living organisms can move from place to place, but most organisms can. So the N in Grimna stands in nutrition, which is basically the process of obtaining food and gaining the nutrients from that food. Right? Super simple. Then E. E stands for excretion. But basically, excretion is the process by which waste and harmful substances are removed from our bodies, right? For example, we know urea. We could get rid of urea from our urine and our sweat. We also get rid of waste from our feces. We get rid of carbon dioxide from exhaling, right? So we're all familiar with all the different types of waste products in our bodies and how we can get rid of them. Yeah. And then the last R stands for reproduction, right? So all living organisms reproduce, which is basically the production of new offspring or new organisms. Some organisms can engage in sexual reproduction where they need another organism of the same species in order to have an offspring. Or they can engage in asexual reproduction where they can have an offspring on their own without requiring an organism from the same species. Taking that everyone understands the seven characteristics of life and they know what Grimna means, right?